Hi everyone, in this video today we're going to take a look at how we can recreate the viable jump and double jump of Hollow Knight uh, in Golo 4.4. This code is a good way for me to organize my own project, Lone Knight, that you can wishlist on Steam, which is a 2D Metroidvania uh, that is made with Golo 4.4. And uh, all to end today, like I'm going to show you how to make that jump. This video is made possible by all the people who buy my course on Udemy, so thank to all of you. I've put the link in the description with some discount, I have like an isometric and a rock light. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to organize a bit my code. So I'm going to create a category in my inspector. So like this, I can see at first glance what is going on. Because right now, if I click on my inspector, for example, I have my player controller. I have my move speed, acceleration, gravity. I'm going to add a lot of different variables as the time goes by. And that's going to start to be a bit uh, unreadable. So for that, uh, first here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come here and I'm going to do at export underscore category. And here I'm going to give that name category movement variable, like this. So now, if you take a look at the player controller, you have that category that is uh, going on here. So now that I have done that, what I can do, I can do the same for the jump. So I'm going to do at export underscore category. And here I'm going to call it jump variable, something like this. And so now there's nothing that shows up because there's no category, there's no variable under uh, my uh, category. So let's, uh, let's get started. So here I'm going to create a first variable, export var, I'm going to call it jump underscore speed, I think it's uh, how I'm naming it, yeah, 190.0. And then I'm going to create another variable that I'm going to use for uh, giving a, a sort of boost and acceleration. So here that variable I'm going to call it acceleration like this and this one i'm going to set it to 290.0 then we need to have another uh, variable that for now going to be called uh, jump amount and this one's going to be uh, a, um, a variable that i'm going to use to do the, for the double jump so here i'm going to call it jump underscore amount amount and i'm going to set it to be equal to two so now, when I take a look at my player, uh, things are a bit more organized, it's nicer to look at, and so now I can see where everything is. Perfect. So now let's create the uh, function I'm going to call the logic. So here, I'm going to create a new function that I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to put it here. Funk, I'm going to call it jump underscore logic. And here, what I want to do is I want to do two things. I want to control the, uh, the, the, the height of my jump by the amount of time I'm pressing on the key. And I also want to have the possibility to double jump. So uh, in other words, uh, I want to know when I'm on the floor. If I'm on the floor, I can jump a certain amount of time. If I'm not on the floor, I have only one amount of jump that is available for me. And I also can uh, stop to jump when I am releasing a key. So for that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my stuff here. If is on floor, like this. What I want to do here is I want to set my jump amount to be equal to two. So the, the logic is like when we're going to make the double jump, uh, the jump amount, we're going to subtract uh, one from every time we're going to jump. So globally, at some point, it's going to be zero. And when we are on floor, we want to recharge the jump amount at two. So now what I can do is I can say, if input dot is action just press, and here we're going to uh, we're going to take a look at UI accept, because if you go to project, project setting, Input map, here you can click on show built-in action. UI accept is either enter or space. And so that's a good, uh, that's a good um, input to use when you want to uh, make your, your jump. You can also create your own one. I'm like, that's fine, we're going to do that when we're going to make the sword and the dash and stuff like this. But for this one, it's largely enough. So here what I want to do is I first want to have my jump amount to be e minus equal one. So I guess I'm subtracting one jump from my uh, total jump amount. And then what I want to do here is I want to make the jump. So here what I want to do is I want to get my velocity.y and I want to set it to be equal to minus equal lerp, which is a linear interpolation. Uh, and here I want to take my jump underscore speed and I want to take my acceleration acceleration and I have to tap a delta so the delta of uh, the delta I <laughs> have to tap a variant for the for the weight so in my test project there was 0 0.1 so that's perfect so now let's have a look so I can for now copy that uh, that jump logic and I can put it into my uh, physics process delta that is checking that is checked 60 frames per second I can put it here so let's have a look 
Can I jump? Can I not jump? I can jump. And the double jump for now doesn't work because we don't have any logic. But we can't jump infinitely. That's already, the, that's already a good thing. So now what we need to do is we need to have a way to cancel the jump when we are uh, releasing the key. Because for now I can press and make the, the full jump. So for doing so, what we can do is we can check if we are not on the floor and if we are pressing a key. So here I'm going to do something else. I'm going to say if not is on floor like this. Then what I can do here is I can say, for example, that uh, I'm going to take my jump amount because I'm going to code at the same time the variable jump and the double jump. That's going to make it a bit easier for me to, to record. So here I'm going to say if jump underscore amount is greater than zero, so it means that we still have some jump uh, amount left and we can potentially jump. Then what we want to do is we want to check if we are pressing again the input. So I'm going to do first that is action just press and here we're going to take our UI accept. If we can jump globally what we're going to do is we're going to copy just that line here. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to change the weight. The weight is going to be important here. So here I'm not going to put the weight at 0 0.1, I'm going to put it at 1. I'm going to show you a little bit later on what it does. Um, for now I'm leaving it like, like this. Uh, and so I need now to check when I am uh, raising the key, because that's what's going to make my uh, jump become variable. Because uh, for now, like the jump is full because I only code logic for when I'm pressing a key, but not when I'm releasing one. So here I can do what I can do is like I can indent my code here on the same if uh, input is action just pressed. And here what I can do is I can say, for example, if input dot is action just release. So here I can take my UI accept. And so here what I can do is I can also uh, take my, uh, my code. So here, for example, I can uh, get my velocity.y. Here I need to set up to equal, not minus equal, equal lerp. And here what I want to lerp is I want to lerp my velocity.y. Then I want to lerp my gravity. So I want to pass from the velocity I am currently in, which is the one of the jump. Uh, I want to interpolate from that velocity jump to my gravity because I'm releasing the key. So I need to start to fall down and I don't want to have like a sort of like very abrupt movement like this. And then what I need to do is I need to uh, set again a weight. So the weight here, I'm going to put it at 0 0.2, which is going to sort of like ease a bit the thing. And then what we want to do is we want to get our velocity dot y, which now is the result of that calculation that we have right here. And we want to time equal 0 0.3, which is going to make a little trick for like transitioning uh, smoothly from the state we are to the falling, uh, the falling part. So with that done, uh, now there's one last, last thing to do, which is we need to uh, just say uh, else. <laughs> So because here we need to come here back to that if statement here because here we are checking if those conditions are met but there's always at some point a condition that is not met so we need to like just think forward and so here we need to do just else return which is going to uh, take us out of that uh, of that code. So now let's have a look. Come here. You can see that now if I make a, a little press I have a small jump but if I make a big press I have a big jump like this so that's cool and so now if i uh, for example multiply my jump speed by a crazy number so let's say i'm, I'm going to put 350 here and here i'm going to put 500 for example let's see you can see that now the acceleration is way bigger and if i jump woo, <laughs> i jump way smaller you can see i have a little skip here that's normal the little um sort of like abrupt movement that I have here when you press and uh, when you start to go down you release the key is because of how the, the code is set up you have to make your own uh, you have to make your own thing for me what was working in my test project I'm just going to put myself back on it so my test project that was 190 and here that was 290 and uh, after that I was like uh, I've set, and after that I've set up I think I've set up everything nicely so let's have a look 0 0.1, 1, 0 0.2, okay, so that's cool. So now we have the basic for our little jump. Now what I want to show you is globally the logic of those weight uh, things. So for example, here instead of 0 uh, of 1, I'm going to put 0 0.1, for example, for when we are, on the, we are not on the floor and we are trying to jump. You, you can see here that although I'm jumping, like 
there's more weight to my player, there's more gravity. So that's what those numbers here are doing. Like if you uh, if you put, for example, here one, like it was uh, before, here you can see that my jump is way bigger. Uh, so be this, be this is because the weight is uh, somehow a little bit, uh, le it's uh, less impacting the code. And that's something that is very important to take into account when you're making those type of, uh, of code here, but that's good. So now you can see that I can, jump but here i have a problem which is that i can jump eternally and this is what i was looking to show you because globally now what i need to do is here in, if input is action just press i'm not subtracting jump amount so here i need to come here and i need to put jump amount like this. so now it's gonna stop me to uh, jump eternally i'm gonna have two uh, two jump so you can see voila voila up and voila that's it so that's good. So now I am all right. So now there is only one element that is missing. It is the animations. So for the animation, we need to go back into our set animation. And now we need to make some condition for the velocity.y. So if velocity.y is uh, smaller than zero, then here what we want to do is we want to get our anim.play to be playing jump. The jump that is right here. And for the full animation, what we want to do is we want to uh, start to play the full animation when we actually start falling. We don't want to start to play the animation when it's greater than zero, but a little bit after. So here for that, what we can do is we can say if velocity.y is greater than, let's say, 10. So then here what I can do is I can say anim.play to be equal to fall. Voilà. And so now, if I play the game, you can see, I can jump, and that's good. And so now I have the character, it is fully animated, and uh, I have a double jump, I have also a variable jump that I can use for making a bit bigger uh, bigger jump. I'm going to increase a bit the size, I'm going to put it at 230. Let's see. So now I can come here, yeah, this is better. Voilà. And so now I have a better jump that I can use for my game. So that's perfect. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to thank me, you can go to Steam and you can wishlist my game Lone Knight, uh, which is a Metroidvania that I'm making with God of War 4. And you can also check my course if you are interested. Uh, me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video where we're going to make the wall jump and the wall slide. So bye.